Welcome to Everyday Discipleship Every Day, where we discuss discipleship in the 21st century, guided by biblical discipleship, a Christian worldview, and individual needs, while discipling our children as well. I'm Terry Hillard Brown, your host, and I'm so glad you're here today. We are on a break in between season two and season three. I can't believe we're already getting ready to start season three. This is awesome. We've got some wonderful guests coming up in season three that you haven't seen yet, and I'm excited for you to hear from them. They have some great things to share. But during the break, I like to do these short videos where I'm just sharing my heart with you, things that I feel like we need to discuss and think about in our walk with God, and especially as we're discipling others. And so I want to talk about when young people come to the Lord. And this is something very near and dear to my heart because I came to know Christ when I was seven years old. We were having the Lord's Supper one Sunday night at our church. And I remember my mom wouldn't let us take part in it because we weren't believers. And so the, you know, we had to pass the plate past us and my mom and dad took the bread and the grape juice and I can't explain it except that God was speaking to my heart and I began to kind of cry and it wasn't a cry because I didn't get to have the little cracker and the grape juice. It wasn't that I wanted that. It was that I wanted what my parents had. I could see in them, especially during the Lord's Supper, you know, when we're examining our hearts and trying to make sure we're right with God and, and just really thanking him for what he has done for us because it's a time of remembrance all that our Christianity stands for and, and what Christ has done for us. I just could see this peace in them that I didn't have. And I knew that I knew that I knew that I needed Jesus. I didn't understand it. I probably wouldn't even have known how to put it into words. I just knew. I knew that a friend or two had also prayed and were getting baptized and stuff. And so I knew something was up but I didn't really understand it until that night. And so when we got home from church, I started asking a million questions, bombarding my parents with questions about how to become a Christian. What does it mean to become a Christian? How do I get saved? I knew that word, you know, I'd grown up in the church. And my mom said, you're too young to understand. And so I still argued a little bit and still asked more questions and they did answer my questions, but that just stuck with me. I was too young. And so I knew I couldn't become a Christian then because mom thought I was too young. That was Sunday night. The next weekend I stayed at my grandma's house. Sometimes I got to go spend the time with her and I was sitting in her living room by myself. And I remember just saying, God, I don't want to wait. I can't wait. I need you now. I want you to be my savior now. And that's all I knew how to pray. And I didn't understand everything, but I understood that. And so then I felt guilty because I felt like I disobeyed my mom. And so Sunday morning, that was Saturday, Sunday morning, I told her, I know you told me to wait, but I prayed anyway. <laughs> And so then we prayed together and I went forward that week and I was baptized the next Sunday night. I say all that to say, yes, there are children who do not have a clue what they're talking about. Their friend went forward, so they think they should go forward, or their friend prayed a prayer, so they think they need to pray a prayer. That happens. There are kids who pray but don't really understand what they're talking about. I remember when my youngest wanted to accept Christ, he, you could tell he understood. And he was quite young, but he brought it up. He asked to pray. He asked to go forward. And then the pastor was asking him if he knew what sin was. Well, now, first you have to understand my son's first language was Chinese. And so English wasn't always his best language. And when he kept saying it with a Southern, well, Oklahoma accent, my son thought he was saying sand. And so he's like, yeah, I know what sand is. It's at the beach. The pastor was very confused about what he was talking about. And I said, no, not sand, sin, when we do something wrong, you know. And, oh, okay, yeah, he understood that. But it was, he used words that my son didn't understand, and so it made it very confusing. And then he tried to drown him when he was baptized. It was not a good experience. And I'm very thankful that my son is still a believer and faithful and 
um, loves God with all his heart. And we know, too, that as our kids grow, they go through struggles. We go through times in our lives when we're rebellious, we're trying to figure out what we believe and who we are, and is my faith my own or is it my parents? Every child who comes to Christ probably is going to go through some of that. And as they're learning who they are as young adults and and teenagers, and they're going through all of those things that you go through, some of them get lost along the way. And we need to really pray that they can find their way back. But I can promise you, most of them who truly, truly understood faith in Christ, and they weren't just following a friend, they weren't just afraid of hell, they really wanted a relationship with Jesus, those come back. They come back to God stronger than ever when they do rebel. But the main point of what I'm saying is, listen. Listen to your children. Well, it, it, This goes for anybody. Listen to anybody who's coming up to you and asking you questions about your faith in Christ and why you believe what you do and wanting to understand all about faith. The Bible tells us no one seeks Jesus. No one seeks God unless he's drawing them to himself. And I'll put that scripture in the show notes. I didn't think to look it up before we started talking. But if someone is seeking God and they have questions about God, genuine questions, you know what I mean, not the ones who are just trying to mock you and get you riled up or whatever, because there are those out there too, but the ones who are genuinely asking questions about God, trying to understand the truth, God is drawing them to himself. And if that's our children, recognize he's drawing them to himself. And sure, they may not understand everything they need to understand. I mean, who does? As a new believer, we don't understand all the theology. We don't understand all the things. But we know that we know that we know that we need a Savior and that we want Jesus to be in our lives and we want a relationship with him. Oh my goodness, that was just so real to me. I couldn't wait until I was older. I had to have Jesus then. And we do such a disservice to our children when we discount their questions. We discount their desire to know Jesus. And I had four children, and all four came to Christ in a very different way. I talked about my youngest son, my next daughter... (laughs) One day, my older two had been really bad. They'd lied to me, and they both had professed faith in Christ. And so I was doing a real mom guilt trip thing, which I really didn't do that often, I don't think, I hope. But this time, I was just like, I couldn't believe it. And I'm like, you say you believe in Jesus and you're following Jesus, but, you know, you you lie and you're trying to deceive us and you're not doing what you know is right. And I was going on and on and poor little Annie, she was probably five. She's sitting there on the couch in between them. And she's like, I want to know Jesus is <laughs> my Lord and savior. <laughs> and, and when you're in a tirade as a parent, especially in a guilt mode tirade, it's really hard to put the brakes on and shift gears. But I'm so thankful that she said that because it made me stop the silliness of having this little fit with my kids and step back. And I told her, I remember, I was like, I'm so happy, but give me just a minute because I had to to shift gears. I had to get back in the right mode because I was so upset. We talked with her and went through the plan of salvation with her and prayed with her And she was so young, she doesn't remember it very well at all. And later actually did make more of a a profession of faith as a teenager. And that's fine. Whether that first prayer was true salvation or not, I don't know. But she knew she wanted something that we had that she didn't have. Just like I was, I knew my parents had something I didn't have. And I didn't want to stand in her way of that. And with my older two, they were quite young too. And originally they were asking to become Christians because they wanted the snack. They wanted the Lord's Supper. And they thought they were missing out on crackers and grape juice. And they've both admitted that. And we've talked about that. But they both made a genuine 
profession of faith when they were a little older. Wherever our children are, we must take it seriously, answer their questions, treat them like they know what they're talking about. If, if the Holy Spirit is drawing them even a little bit, even if he's just drawing them closer to a true relationship with him, we need to answer those questions. We need to acknowledge that and be open with them and be excited with them that they are learning. They are growing closer. And the other thing I wanted to say with this, and I'll finish with this, there are different beliefs in our different traditions where we think in my tradition where I grew up, you prayed a prayer, you got saved. It was, you know, weren't a Christian, became a Christian. The prayer in the middle made the difference. And a lot of people have done that and it's been more fire insurance. It's been more just, I don't want to go to hell. It's been, like I said, copying what their friends are doing. And so that little prayer wasn't always what they needed. They needed to repent of sin. They needed to understand that they needed a savior. So we need to clearly articulate the gospel. We need to clearly, in words that the child can understand, and see that they truly truly understand what they're talking about, that they're not just copying a friend or whatever. But then the other thing is, and for me, I'll just say, for me, it was that real. That prayer I prayed at my grandma's, that's when I became a Christian. It was night and day for me. And I don't know how to explain it any other way, because it wasn't like I was a terrible sinner addicted to alcohol and drugs. <laughs> I was seven years old. But there was a change in my heart. It was like I came to life. That's all I can say. Before that prayer, I was dead. I needed a Savior. I was lost. After that prayer, Jesus was my friend. He was my Savior. He was my Lord. And I got up from that chair where I was sitting at my grandma's house, walking a new life. And once I got things settled with my mom the next day, then I also had a life that was a lot less guilt-ridden. I remember when I was baptized, I felt like I could fly. I felt like I had been set free from this burden I'd been carrying. And it was a new life in Christ. And very rarely have I doubted my salvation because it was such a potent, real, palpable experience. I know he spoke to me during the Lord's Supper, but I didn't know him, and I knew him after. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've struggled. Oh, my goodness, you know, we all do. But I've grown steadily and hopefully steadily in my faith, but I've always known that was when the change happened. My mentor is one who grew into her faith. She understood a little and took that little step of faith and then as she understood more, she took another step of faith. And she can't tell you when she truly became a Christian, when she truly became a believer, because little by little, she just grew into her faith. And it started when she was about four years old. And so she has little by little come into a total understanding of what it means to be a follower of Christ. And she's one of the most faithful followers I've ever met. Some people grow into their faith little by little, especially if we've raised them in the church. And some of us have a situation that is a really powerful, immediate change. And we know that's where our faith started, our faith walk started, when we truly believed. and knew we needed a savior. I think we need to understand that our children may have either kind of those experiences and both are okay because God knows what he's doing and we need to trust that he knows what he's doing, but never discount the questions a child is asking. Even if you think they're being a smart aleck and trying to be goofy, answer the question anyway. You never know how God's going to use that in their lives. And it's one of the most important ministries we can have is ministering to children, helping them to live their whole lives for Christ and not fall into so many of the traps that they could fall into. Oh, I pray that all our children come to Christ young. And even if they struggle later on to understand what they really understood, I would rather them do that than be lost and have such a hard time finding their way and coming to Christ later in life. So I encourage you to 
be faithful, continue to read those Bible stories, continue to pray for your children. And every time they have a question, answer that question and just look at what God is doing as he's drawing them little by little to himself. Well, I'm so glad you joined us today. I hope you'll stay with us and come back when we start season three of Everyday Discipleship Every Day. And I hope that your children are just delighting in the Lord and being drawn closer to him every day, just as I hope we are too. Our prayer is that we can obey Jesus' command to make disciples as we reach and equip this generation of believers to reach and equip the next generation of believers with everyday discipleship every day. Mm -hmm.